Hey guys, Matt Hoots here, and I'm at the 1920s Makeover ATL. Now, I'm going to go over the detail of, quite frankly, has been one of the, the hardest things that I've been trying to figure out for the last few months. This is a passive house, so we have to have continuous insulation and all six sides of the house. Slab is pretty easy. Actually, it wasn't easy, but it was easy enough to figure out because there's plenty of details out there. Walls, again, you can see we've got the insulation on the walls and also on the roof. The challenge was that we had was how do we get this insulation on top of this walkout terrace? How do you keep all the leaves and stuff out of there? Let's look at the assembly up top. I've got the framing. I've got the, the decking. We're using Advantech up there. And again, that's going to be our primary framing for that. Now, this product right here is called FinPan. And this is designed usually to go on an exterior deck and it goes directly to the joist. However, here, I do want that control layer. I want the, the Advantech and also need the insulation above it. So what we're gonna do is put down all of this insulation, finish doing the little sides of the deck that we've got continuous insulation on the deck, up the sides and it basically wraps around to the roof. Now, in order to put the tile down, I'm going to use this product. So what this does, this is a fiberglass product. You can see the edge profile here. And this goes down, I'm going to screw it down with uh, this type of screw. What this is going to do is it's going to pull this down to the insulation and go straight into the joist, the ceiling joist or the decking joist below that. So that's gonna hold this in place. Uh, once all that is down, we're going to put a coat of concrete on top of this, 3000 PSA concrete, no aggregate. That's gonna smooth this over. So essentially what we've done is built a concrete deck on top of wood frame construction. And then in this case, on top of wood frame construction with a thermal break and the deck. We don't have to worry about dew point below this, we don't have to worry about anything condensing on the bottom of this because you have this insulation, water's not going to be below this, and also it's going to keep this whole assembly insulated very well. Uh, this is um, on the foundation walls and also on the roof, we're using the Comfort Board 80 and 110 respectively, depending on where we're putting it. Underneath the slab, we use the Comfort Board 110, again, a little bit stronger PSI. This one is even more dense than those. This is designed specifically for roofing. So we're using this Rockwell product. There's other, there's lots of different Rockwell products that you can use on a roof. And uh, sometimes we'll use the Rockwell top rock if we're doing some sort of membrane on top of that. In this case, it doesn't matter. We're putting this decking on top of it. This pan, it's going to go directly on top of this. So we didn't necessarily need that additional coating that you typically have to have. If you're gonna do some sort of membrane roof that's gonna go on top of the insulation. So this is designed for a commercial application. We're using it in residential, but Again, I'm squeezing this as hard as I can right now. It's not giving at all. So with this on top of it, with the concrete that's going to go into it, that's going to strengthen us quite a bit. So we don't have to worry about any movement on here, which could cause tiles and whatnot to pop. So let's go over how this, this goes together real quick, and, and we'll, we'll see how it goes together on the roof. So there's two different parts of this. You've got um, the, the channel here. Uh, you've got the, and, and both sides are different. So what happens is this side actually just snaps in on top of the one that's here. Now, if you're doing a regular deck and there's nothing below, um, you can have these where these are butt joints um, because what, what's going to happen is like, as long as this is continuous, it doesn't really matter which direction it's going in our application. But typically if you're installing this on a normal deck, what you want to do is have, have this going perpendicular to the floor joist. So this will be perpendicular to the floor joist. You pour that layer of cement on top of this, the concrete, and you've got this really stiffened, strong application here. And once we have this in place, we're gonna put a membrane that goes on top of it. So it's gonna go on top of the deck. It's gonna go up the flashing on the wall. That way, if any water hits this and it makes it through the tile, makes it through the substrate, it's gonna have a way to, to basically flash down and get off the deck. So as we put the fiberglass decking down, we want to be cognizant of the fact that we're gonna have trim on the outside. So what I'm gonna do down here is actually have a little bit of an overhang. So this is just like a mock-up that we did earlier for the rest of the soffit. So what's gonna happen is this is gonna go in place. There's actually gonna be some wood blocking behind that. So this is gonna go in place and then we have flashing that goes on top of that. So once the concrete is, is poured, we've got the membrane down before the tile goes down, you've got this, this, edge, this edge flashing. So this is how it's gonna finish out in the very end. Again, the AZEC uh, part we're gonna peel off but you can see this is a nice clean transition to the AZEC. So we're using AZEC, which is uh, basically rot free because it is a PVC material. The, the tile is going to be resistant uh, to water as well. So this whole assembly, we don't have to worry about water getting into it. 
because it can be able to hit this pan, come off. And if water, as it drips off the edge over here, it's only going to be hitting PVC. Probably gonna have a gutter up there as well. So again, nothing on the outside has to be maintained. We are making sure that this is designed so it's very tight and all the transitions are nice and clean because that's what you're gonna expect on a house of this caliber. We've got all the roof insulation on. You can see two inches here, but we have another eight inches below this two inches. We have this blocking here, which we have something to nail the soffit and fascia onto. And we also have the furring strips. So the reason we weren't able to pack this out yet is because we didn't have the insulation down on this deck. So we're gonna stick the three inches down on the deck. Then we're gonna put eight inches in the wall. All right, these are gonna be too deep. What I'm gonna go ahead and do for the first layer is just line them all out, put the outside piece on, and then I'm just gonna cut it. And the only, I'm gonna screw these in. I'm just gonna add one screw with a washer per piece on the outside. That's just more to hold it in place until we have a chance to put the fin pan, which is that fiberglass pan down. All right, we've got all the top rock down on the porch here. And we put, since we got that down, we're able to finish putting this section under the wall. Again, this is eight inches. We've got the comfort board 80 top rock here. Uh, put some flashing around the edge as a starting piece. Now, the instructions didn't call for that. However, when I pour the cement, we're going to put a grout base down first, 3000 PSI. I actually think it hardens to be a little bit, a little bit harder than 3000 PSI over 30 days. Once we put that down, I didn't want it to go over too far. This is also going to allow us to put the furring strips down on top of that. Cause I want the flashing behind the furring strips. Furring strips go down. And we're gonna put the bug screen on the bottom. So this kind of sets up the wall assembly. That way we can uh, transition cleanly to the roof. So I've got the, the TI Pro board. We went ahead and cut these now um what i did is i cut these a little bit long so i added two inches for insulation that's going to go all around the outside again that's going to be the comfort board ad just on the nose right here we're putting two inches we're going to have a three quarter inch furry strip again the bug screen at the bottom and then we're going to have five quarter board which is one inch thick so we basically cut these exactly three and three quarters inch too long that way we can go ahead and put the siding on the edge once we get this installed so the first thing we're going to do is snap three of these together Make sure they line up, kind of square it off to the wall, uh, this wall and this wall over here. And once we have that lined up and we're comfortable with the edge in the front, we can go ahead and lay the rest of them down. The instructions call for us to put a screw in every fourth section. And uh, what I noticed is they actually have some guidelines here in every fourth section. So this one right here is very important to hit because it's right where the the cap fits over the other side. This is like where you make the connection. This is gonna help pull it down and make that connection. And the other one is basically just something that's mid-span. So make sure you put in at least two per board. Uh, this is 12 inches wide, so every six inches. But again, you don't even have to really think or mark it, mark it out. You just look at where you've got the, the line on here and it's basically gonna cross with the joist underneath it. Make those connections and you're good to go. All right, we've got the majority of the TI Pro board down uh, by FinPan. Uh, we've got the starter strip of flashing and again that's more so we can have something to put the furring strips in front of we're about to put a 3000 psi mortar down and that's also going to create a nice edge for that mortar it's going to go all the way around we also have it in front of where the roofing is going to stop the roofing is just going to flash over that then we've got continuous flashing all behind the siding and the roofing that's integrated all the way down to the ground just got to put a few more screws down and then we're done We've already probably put a couple hundred in already, another 50 or so, and then we can go ahead and get the mortar mixed up and start troweling it on. All right, we mixed up some mortar. This is 3000 PSI. I'll show you what we, we got. We ended up getting the best kind out there because it dries a lot harder than this over 30 days. So we're just gonna pour this out, spread it out, mix it up again and rinse and repeat till we're done. So we've got this membrane cut to fit. We were able to use all this up in one roll. One roll is about 150 square feet. So we cut this, we rolled it up. We had a storm coming in last night, so we let the, the storm clear. Um, next, what we have to do is prime the roof. Now this is where we have the NAC TAC primer. Uh, rolling this across the roof. Now we wanna make sure that this uh, cures just a little bit. They said it can start within 10 minutes, but also so it, should, it should be ready to go within 45 minutes. So. I'm assuming like around the 20 minute mark that we can go ahead and put this membrane back down. So rolling this primer out all the way across, is, again, it's about 150, 160 square feet. 
Um, then we're going to put this back down. Now we start with the edge. Now we're going to put it along the edge of the deck first. So we've already got that, that piece that's pre-cut. We're going to pull off the, the backing on this. So when we do that, we've got a trowel. We also have a roller. We're gonna make sure we get all the air bubbles out before we put the next layer on. Then we're gonna put the next layer, then the last layer on. So we only, we only have three or four pieces that we're going to put on. And once all that is on, we're comfortable with the membrane, the way all the air bubbles are out. Then we're gonna come back and make sure the edges are sealed up. Now this, what we have is the six inch seam tape. Now this is very flexible. This can, this can actually go around the corners. It can go around outside corners and also it's designed for inside corners. Now they do have a product where you can put it on the outside corners and the inside corners. However, we decided that to just use this, that we have a continuous piece of tape all the way around. Um, and also that this, since it is flexible, we didn't really feel the need for those, those products. They are good products if you decide to, to use those. However, in this application, we're going to wrap this all the way around. Um, it's, it's, it looks like it's tack, tacky on both sides. So we're gonna peel, peel this tape off. We're gonna stick it on all the way around, continuous, probably about 30 or 40 linear feet. Now the sub seal, what this does is it, wherever we have the overlapping membranes, we paint this on, um, it's gonna go over like wherever this laps, like one joint to the next. And this is the part that, that laps when it comes to the actual membrane. This is just another precaution. I think this is gonna work just fine, but we're going to put this on the membrane. And if, if needed, we're going to also apply it to where we have any of the seam tape if we don't feel like the seam tape is, is going to be enough. Again, this is definitely considered waterproofing. So this is designed for commercial roofs. You can use on residential like we're using here. And this is so we can have tile on it. We don't have to worry about tiles popping off. Um, because it is a solid uh, substrate and also it's designed where we can put the tile on um, and be worry free. We don't have to worry about doing any waterproofing on top of the tile. Um, we've got our all our different continuous layers. We've got our uh, water resistant membrane first with the, the zip system. We have the thermal control membrane with the rock wool and then we've got the TI Pro board which is giving us that solid substrate for the tile itself. And then, in, and then last but not least, part of their system is doing all the waterproofing. This has been a, immediately a challenge, making sure that we had all the right pieces, we installed them in the right order so that this would work for a passive house. Now for a typical house, you probably wouldn't be adding that insulation underneath it. And so that was one of the challenges, making sure that we found a, an insulation that you could put underneath this product. Again, we tested it out. There's no movement at all, which means there's gonna be no movement in the tile. We've got the continuous layer of insulation. So passive house is going to be happy. And also I can sleep at night. I don't have to worry about water getting into the house because we do have this membrane down, all the different waterproofing steps. So we don't have to worry about water getting through there into the house and affecting the system. All right, we've got the membrane down. Everything is 100% with this system. Um, some of my initial reactions on this, I guess it wasn't harder or more difficult to install than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, the, the membrane actually went on a lot easier. This system, the waterproofing system, I was expecting it to be very difficult to work with. It was actually a lot easier to work with. The TI Pro Board, um, I'll be honest, I, I didn't think it was gonna be that rigid once we added all the concrete to it. By adding the concrete, it was a lot stronger than I thought it was gonna be, so very impressed with that. So overall, um, this is a little bit better than I, was, than I thought that I was gonna get with the system. It's a good system, I knew it was gonna work. It was much easier to work with. And I'll say this is probably good for the DIYer or if you're just a general contractor trying to put a tile deck down in place of a wood deck. This is a very easy system to work with. Again, I'm a carpenter. I use general laborers to help me with this and I don't think we had any problems with it and so far it's working really well. So if you notice the mess down here, we've got leaves and stuff all over the place. Lots of trees, we're in Atlanta, it's called Tree Atlanta. Then this is the green city. And the reason that we like to go with this type of application versus a lot of people ask, why aren't you just putting like regular deck boards down here doing some sort of floating system and then having deck boards on top of it. The problem is all the leaves, debris and stuff like that, that's gonna get in those grooves, it's gonna clog it up. It's gonna basically cause a dam and potentially water can get into the house. So the reason you wanna go with something that captures all the water, immediately sheds it off and doesn't have the capacity for debris to get into it is that this is gonna be a maintenance nightmare. I tend to find that most clients that are looking to maintain houses or we design something that does take maintenance. They usually don't. They call me back several years later when it's completely rotted 
and there's issues with it. And I said, hey, we wanted that design. You had to maintain it. They usually don't maintain it. So I try to come up with maintenance-free designs, maintenance-free solutions just like this. That way our clients can just enjoy their houses and not have to worry 24-7, 365 about what things they have to do to their house. The house just does it for them. I'd like to thank all the project partners that made this particular project on the 1920s house happen. I'm talking about this deck. We had Huber, they helped with the, the substrate. We had rock wool. They had the continuous layer of insulation below this. So there's no thermal breaking. We're not worried about reaching dew point. There's not going to be any condensation on the bottom of this deck. TI Pro Board for helping us, quite frankly, figure this out because I was having a hard time figuring out the best application. And they came up with this. This is the only type of underlayment that is recommended by the American Tile Association for this application. So you definitely want to go with this, especially to have living space below it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is part of a series of other videos uh, documenting the first ever passive house in Atlanta, which is the first ever passive house retrofit. Never before has there been a retrofit of a house in Georgia where we we built it to passive house standards. We've had a, we've had the challenges. You can check out the video uh, in the upper right hand corner where we talked about how we did the foundation because we we basically did a passive house retrofit fias level foundation that was compliant with this house in place and if you want to see all the videos in the bottom right hand uh, corner we've got a list of the full playlist of all these videos thanks again see you guys next time